Reading the Big Oyster was really meaningful because it really painted a clear picture. There were 200,000 acres of oyster reefs in New York Harbor. 300 square miles of reefs. This is oyster capital of the world. 50% of the world's oysters were coming out in New York Harbor. At its core, really, I think the Billion Oyster Project is a urban estuary rewilding project that is aimed to connect more and more young people to nature and to wilderness. My name is Murray Fisher. I'm the co-founder of the New York Harbor School. I'm the co-founder of the Billion Oyster Project, and I run the New York Harbor Foundation that supports us too. And today we're out on Governor's Island, which is the home of the New York Harbor School and the Billion Oyster Project, the right 172-acre uh, island in the middle of New York Harbor. But New York Harbor used to be one of the most bioproductive places on planet Earth. Uh, my name is Pete Malinowski. I'm the director of the Billion Oyster Project. New York Harbor used to be totally full of oysters, um, and they, they were the backbone of a vast and productive ecosystem that there's nowhere on earth that that kind of abundance exists anymore because we've removed all the animals from all those places. We had virtually eaten the last ones and the ones that were left when they died, they couldn't reestablish themselves because the water quality was so poor. I had started the Harbor School, which was in Bushwick, Brooklyn at the time, a marine science and technology public high school. And we were trying to engage more and more kids in caring about, learning about, studying the marine environment. On Saturdays, we had an oyster gardening program that we did with a New York, New Jersey baykeeper. It became clear that the project could exist outside of Harbor School and could be a larger initiative. And so Murray and I started throwing around the name Billion Oyster Project is both an exciting you know, initiative that we can involve a lot of people around and also as a very practical way to engage Harbor School students directly in the work of restoring the harbor. So oysters are what they call ecosystem engineers. That means that they have a disproportionately positive impact on their ecosystem. An oyster, just like coral reefs, build on top of each other and self-aggregate and grow on top of each other to form reefs. Just like coral reefs in the Caribbean, oysters are a temperate water analog coral reefs in the Caribbean. And so they are the keystone species for New York Harbor. So it's the habitat which leads to biodiversity, that leads to more abundance of fish and other related marine species. It's the water clarity and the water quality. And then the third is oysters played an important role in resilience. Actually those huge oyster reefs would slow down storm action and storms that would come to New York. So they actually were natural storm barriers. We literally ate the things that protected us from storms. The standing volume in New York Harbor is actually 74 billion gallons. Now this water never stands still, so this is all just theoretical because it's always moving. But an adult oyster filters a gallon of water an hour. So one oyster will filter on average 24 gallons of water a day. So we realized that a billion live oysters in New York Harbor would theoretically filter the standing volume in New York Harbor once every three days. Which was, it was just helpful because it, it, it showed that it was a scale large enough to actually have a meaningful impact. You know, a billion oysters is a, a tiny drop in the bucket compared to what used to be here. Almost insignificant number compared to the size of New York Harbor and what used to be here. But we believe that that level of intervention is necessary to get the oysters to a point where they can reproduce on their own. And then they'll be much better able to increase their population in a more natural way than we could by growing and planting. So it's almost like jump-starting the ecosystem again. Well, they will then be able to bioaccumulate again like they once used to. So the, what Billion Oyster Project does is we start by collecting the oyster shells from restaurants. There are about four to 500 restaurants right now in, the New, York, in New York City that serve oysters. We collect from only 50 restaurants, which is huge. We're so excited about it, but we're only collecting 10% of the oyster shells. Almost all the oysters that come into New York leave in black plastic bags bound for landfills. And so we try to save as many as we can from the landfill. And right now we're, we run a truck four days a week and we get about four tons of shell per week. We use those shells and we put them into remote setting facilities where we then introduce lots of baby oysters. They swim around and then attach to the oyster shells and that one shell will have 20 baby oysters on it and those grow into a reef-like clump. And that's what we then put down onto the bottom. So we see an immediate and dramatic effect on local biodiversity when we put an oyster reef in the water. A few weeks after putting a reef down, we'll go back and in that area where you used to just see flat sand or flat mud, that same area will be colonized with thousands of different animals that are all attracted to the structure and the food created by the oyster reef. 
We need as many people as engaged as possible. There are 1.1 million public school students in New York City. So imagine if we could get all schools engaged in that effort, then we could get to a billion much faster. So besides the schools, how do you get more volunteers? How do you get the public knowing about, excited about restoring oysters to New York Harbor? So we have this exhibit on Governor's Island where I'm sitting now. And then we also, um, at the Mass Center, we bring over people for tours as well. And then we've built, and we're building this summer, several community reefs, which are actually reefs that are going to be monitored by and taken care of by the local community. When you try to create a movement, I think you really need uh, an organism that captures people's imagination. In the last 15 years, there's been a total oyster renaissance in New York City. Being able to make that connection between that experience and restoring the environment is a really powerful thing. And what's been so exciting about it, maybe it's because we came out of Harbor School, is that we've come to it with such great relationships with all the people who operate in New York Harbor that we've gotten tons of support. Everybody's been really supportive and trying to help and making connections. I think that's been really exciting to see. And I think that the hope for sustainable cities is if we can have wilderness in cities by rewilding these estuaries.